Hello everybody, my name is Matteo Benedetti. I'm an Associate Professor in Machine Design and Structural Integrity at the University of Trento, Italy, and I will present a work about the nice critique strength of ductile cast iron carried out in cooperation with Fonderia Ariotti, University of Pisa and University of Padua. Cast iron is an iron alloy with a high carbon content able to considerably reduce the melting temperature and to increase castability. To avoid the precipitation of hard and brittle cementite, silicon is added to the chemical composition to promote the precipitation of carbon in the form of graphite. If high mechanical properties are requested, magnesium and other elements are added to promote the precipitation of spheroidal nodules of graphite. This type of cast iron is denoted as spheroidal, nodular, or ductile cast iron. This is in general employed in the production of large thick walled castings. The resulting unfavorable solidification conditions lead usually to the formation of casting defects, such as the generation of graphite nodules and the shrinkage microporosity, which impact detrimentally on the fatigue strength. In general, machine and structural elements display geometrical discontinuities generically termed as notches, that produce stress concentration and greatly affect the resulting fatigue strength. In the fatigue design of components made of ductile cast iron, it is therefore of paramount importance to evaluate the effect of the concomitant presence of notches and cast defects. For this purpose, in this work, we will explore the fatigue strength of ductile cast iron by performing fully reverse axial fatigue tests on plain and notch specimens carrying notches of different severity, and we will try to interpret the experimental results according to a critical distance approach. The theory of critical distance encompasses several notch fatigue calculation methods that postulate the fact that a crack or a notch member is in fatigue critical condition when the crack or notch stress field averaged over a control volume equals the plain fatigue strength of the material. In the classical formulation of the theory, the size of such control volume turns out to depend on the plain fatigue strength and the long crack threshold delta kth. In this work, the experimentation was carried out on a perlitic ductile cast iron GS600. The specimens were extracted from a mass cast cylinder of high thermal modulus exposed to natural air convection, thus representative of thick wallet castings subjected to long solidification times. All the samples were taken from the bottom half of the cast cylinder in order to maintain a certain uniformity in microstructure and effectiveness. The fatigue characterization was conducted using axisymmetric specimen geometry. Specifically, the plain specimen geometry was used to determine the material's baseline fatigue FM curve. V notch specimen geometries are characterized by a notch depth, which was optimized to maximize the intensity of the asymptotic stress filter. Specimens B and C have a notch opening angle of 60 degrees and differ only in the notch tip radius whose nominal value was set equal to 0.2 and 1 mm, respectively. In the following, they will be denoted as sharp and blunt notches. Two additional notch geometries, D and E, were selected to obtain independent fatigue data to be used to validate the predictions made applying the critical distance theory. Alternate axial fatigue tests were carried out in laboratory environment using a resonant testing machine and exploring fatigue lives until 5 million cycles. In addition, four fractured plain specimens were scanned and analyzed through metrological X-ray computer tomography. The acquired projections were used to detect and measure internal void as well as graphite modules in terms of dimension, shape, and position. The result of the axial fatigue tests are compared in this plot. It can be noted that the plain fatigue data are affected by a considerable scatter 
significantly larger than that of the notched counterpart. The fatigue curves of the notch variants approximately scale according to the notch stress concentration factor, Kt. Apart geometry E, which displays a superior fatigue strength, with respect to that expected from Kt. Apparently, the small specimen diameter results in a more localized and thus less detrimental notch stress field. SEM analysis were conducted to identify the dominant drug initiation mechanism acting in the high cycle fatigue regime. In all the investigated small samples, the crack was found to initiate in the vicinity of a large solidification shrinkage pore. The scenario depicted by the fracture surface of much variance is completely different. Despite careful search, no shrinkage microporosity was found in the neighborhood of any fatigue crack initiation site at the tip of the notch samples. The fracture surface Report in this figure indicates that the crack nucleated from a large graphite nodule located in the vicinity of the notch tip. However, the smeary action exerted by the fully reversed stress cycle in the fracture surface eliminated characteristic features, striations, pitch marks, permitting to unambiguously identify the graphite nodule as the microstructural constituent originating the fatigue damage. To overcome this difficulty, some notches samples survived after 5 million cycles were retested by applying tension-tension stress cycles until final failure. An example of this obtained fracture surface is shown here at two magnification level. The dashed line indicates the front of the non-propagating crack nucleating in the runout test. Its morphology is much less deteriorated, so that striations are particularly visible here. They clearly point out that the crack nucleated from this graphite module. CT scans performed on plane samples provide a convincing interpretative key of the above described fracture scenario. In this CT data image of a fatigue plane specimen, Shrinkage microporosity is highlighted in a color scale expressing the pore volume. It can be noted that the fatigue fracture originated from the largest pore present in the gauge volume of the specimen. In addition, pores are of much larger size and much lesser amount with respect to the graphite nodules, as summarized in this table. Importantly, in the gauge volume, only 14 versus about 60,000 graphite nodules were detected, displaying a mean diameter about five times larger and much lower sphericity and presumably higher stress concentration factor with respect to graphite nodules. It is now clear that the fatigue damage mechanisms prevailing in plain and notch components are different. This could hinder the applicability of the theory of critical distances, which postulates that the critical distance R can be inferred from a plane and a notched or cracked configuration. Specifically, with the term plane and threshold, the approach based on the determination of L starting from plane, fatigue strength, and crack threshold, delta KTH. With plane and sharp, we denote the inverse search method recently derived by us in this paper and based on the use of a plane sample and a notch samples with optimal shape to minimize the sensitivity to experimental uncertainty. To overcome the above discussed shortcoming, we explore in this work a third approach, term blunt and sharp, wherein the distance IL is inferred from two notch geometries with different notch severity. The fatigue characteristics determined this way are representative of the fatigue damage mechanism ruling the neighborhood of the notch tip. In this way, it is possible to deduce, along with the critical distance L star, an intrinsic plane fatigue strength delta sigma FL star, which ideally represents the fatigue strength measured 
using miniaturized plain samples extracted from the notch tip. This table lists the plane fatigue strength and the critical distance evaluated according to these three possible approaches. To apply the first approach, plane and threshold, the crack growth threshold was determined from fatigue crack growth experiment performed on an empty specimen. It can be noted that the two approaches based on the plane fatigue limit predict a very large value of the critical distance above 0.5 mm well above the re values typically reported in the literature for structural metallic materials. Conversely, the approach blunt and sharp, based on two knot specimen geometries, estimates a much shorter critical distance, about 0.14 mm, and an intrinsic plane fatigue strength, about 270 MPa, significantly higher than that displayed by plane samples that we know to be affected by microporosity. From the photographic analysis, it can be argued that the graphite nodules play a crucial role in dictating the notch fatigue strength of ductile cast iron. Since the fatigue process zone is concentrated in the vicinity of the notch tip, it seems to be reasonable to link the intrinsic fatigue strength to the fatigue strength corresponding to the largest graphite nodule expected in such critical volume, which is here taken as a toroidal volume centered on the notch tip and of size equal to twice the critical distance. Applying the statistics of largest extremes to the population of graphite nodules detected via CT scans, it is possible to evaluate a maximum square root area of such defect equal to about 150 microns. Then we try to predict the fatigue strength of the material encompassed within the control volume using the following square root models proposed in the literature and successfully applied to DCI. It can be noted that the values of the predicted fatigue strength are significantly higher than the plain fatigue strength experimentally observed as a result of the different size of the defect triggering the fatigue damage. The value predicted by Borsato is identical to that of the intrinsic plane fatigue strength estimated through the double notch inversion method, thus confirming the suitability of this approach to predict the notch fatigue strength of DCI. This table shows the fatigue strength of independent notch variants and permits to assess the suitability of these three critical distance approaches to predict the notch fatigue resistance of DCI. A systematic comparison is possible only for variants D and E, used in either of these approaches. Interestingly, the blunt and sharp approach is the only one able to keep the absolute relative error well below 10%. Conversely, the plane and threshold and the plane and sharp predictions are affected by larger errors, since these latter two approaches are influenced by fatigue damage mechanisms occurring in plane and empty specimens that are scarcely representative of those taking place in notch coupons. The blunt and sharp approach was then successfully extended to the medium cycle fatigue regime with predictions in satisfactory agreement with the experimental data. Now I'd like to summarize the main points of this work. A significant difference was found in the defectiveness triggering the fatigue damage. In plain samples, a few shrinkage pores were found in the gauge section through CT analysis. The largest pore is responsible for the fatigue crack initiation. In not samples, the likelihood that such critical pore is located in the process zone ahead of the notch tip is very low. Therefore, the fatigue damage is promoted by the largest graphite nodules therein located. This evidence must be taken into account when applying a critical distance approach to predict the fatigue strength of ductile cast iron. Another inverse search 
based on the use of two optimized notch geometries, differing in notch root radius, is better suited to TCD fatigue calculation of intrinsically fluoride materials, such as additively manufactured materials, which will be matter of future investigations. Thank you for your attention.